Going on YouTube, Clover Bells here back with another Scarlet Violet video. And today we're going to be doing a little bit of a recap on the Toronto regions that finished, you know, just a few hours ago. So we're wasting no time in discussing some of these results. Uh, basically, it was a 500 player, 500 plus player regional. So pretty good uh, turnout there. And uh, we saw a couple of results here that are rather interesting to discuss. Uh, and we're going to look at, you know, other things, you know, that were rather niche, but still could like you know, see a rise in usage later on, you know, and it was just interesting to see, you know, some stuff and development uh, with this region, especially after the Lyle regionals. But <clears throat> I just want to talk about day one and day two uses first before we even discuss any kind of teams. So day one, right, we have what, well, you know, we have this stuff and it looks like, you know, some relatively standard things, you know, Fluttermane, Iron Hands, Landers, yet again, uh, within the top three. Okay. And again, you know, you'll probably get some rotation of these three, you know, as one would expect. Then you have the uh, fire and water ogre pond. And again, water being a little bit higher in usage than the fire one, you know, because of the defensive uh, capabilities, especially against the water Urshifu, which is not far behind, uh, be, you know, from the water ogre pond. And, you know, there was a brief time where the Urshifu was dropped, but now it's, you know, still very, very strong yet again. Um, you know, still not the same usage where it once was in regulation D. Same with like Fluttermane over here, but it's still pretty good. Like 29% is strong. And then 50% here on the Fluttermane is also really, really good. Then you have, you know, uh, stuff that is always pretty consistent within the top 12, you know, Chen Pao, Tornadus, Rillaboom. Uh, the Hisuian Arcanine is still pretty good as well. You know, this is uh, also very, very strong in terms of Atlanders, in terms of, you know, giving the Intimidate support. And then Dragonite sneaking in uh, within the top 12. But then uh, you look at day two and look at this development, all right? Lander is not in the top three, okay? It's still within the top six, but Urshifu back to being the, the number one use Pokemon. And then Iron Hands and Fluttermane also here. Fluttermane at 38% usage, right? You know, remember there was a time where this thing was like 70 plus percent, but take this with a grain of salt. So like, if you go into the Lab Mouse website, which is by the way, another very, very good VGC resource and tool that you could use, especially in terms of like team building and studying results. If you just look at Fluttermane over here, uh, and if you look at the usage, I know you guys can't really see it, so let me just make it a little bit bigger, okay? So something like this, where the Fluttermane is at 50% usage, right? So 276 appearances, that means 276 teams uh, of the 500 plus had a Fluttermane, which means 50% usage, right? So that tells me, you know, Fluttermane is still very, very strong. Same with Iron Hand, same with Landris over here. All right, so again, like outside of the top results, like just as a tournament in general, Fluttermane is still uh, within that number one usage, okay? So now we go back here and then look at some of the newer, you know, newer things to enter the top top. Amoongus, Goldango, and Iron Bundle. This is pretty, pretty interesting. All right, and then Landris and Arcanine are actually tied now as far as like the, you know, the dominant Intimidator, as we say. But these are always going to be like one and two either way, no matter what. But it was just interesting to see like landers drop from one to all the way down to six over here. But still pretty in in same stuff with Champau and Tornadus and Rillaboom here still staying within the, the top six here. But uh, Amoongus, like we said, we always would say, you know, Amoongus is going to come back, all right, in some shape or form. Maybe not where it once was in regulation D, but it will rise again, okay? It started off as like, you know, non-existent. People were playing Ogre Pond completely. And now... You, if you look here, where's the Ogre Pond? There is no Wellspring Ogre Pond. There is no Heart Flame Mass Ogre Pond. Instead, we have Amoongus back within the top 12. And then not only that, we have Goldango as well, along with the, the Iron Bundle here. So Iron Bundle, you know, with the boost energy, is able to great, give you great speed control, good into a lot of things like, you know, Landris and even the Arcanine to an extent. Uh, so, you know, pairs well with Fluttermane you, and, you know, pretty good against dragon types, you know, because you're an ice type in general and dragon um, is relatively strong right now. So, <clears throat> you know, no question about it. Iron Bundle returning within the top. Zone. So that's pretty interesting. And what's also pretty cool is that, you know, if you just look at where we were at Lyle. OK, this was our top 12 after Lyle. Right. So uh, you still had the Amoongus here. All right. At 14 percent usage. But now. Uh, now you have it at 20 and then there was no even iron bundle here you still had heart flame mass and wellspring over here but now those have been replaced you know by you know um, the, the, these other options like goldango over here and, and, and then you know the iron bundle and the mungus so what does that mean that means 
Okay, we're, we're getting a little bit more defensive in where we are in terms of the meta, right? Because uh, offensively, this is pretty strong. You know, this was also good defensively. But now, you know, Amungus coming back here uh, along with Iron Bundle, again, with the speed control, Encore capabilities as well, uh, is, is pretty interesting, right? And we saw a uh, pretty good... Uh, some teams here, especially like Justin Tang's team, right? You know, which we'll go into in a second, but it's just pretty interesting to see where we are right now um, in terms of, you know, the top 12 use Pokemon. But uh, as far as like where we go from here, as far as like the next regional, I, I think Amoongus goes up, okay? The, the, I, I think it'll crack 25% uses ne next time, right? I can totally see it. Uh, Goldango, same thing. Uh, I don't think it'll rise that much from here. I think this is a pretty good placement to... You know as far as like where goldango could be but um you know i think arcanine can rise even more just a little bit but you know if arcanine rises more then i expect iron bundle to also rise a little bit more especially like other water types in general but you know again the lander is also still like relatively strong here but you know i i, I do think amoongus will still rise even more here and you know again like we saw in, in lyle 14 percent now we're at 20 i think you know another five percent is uh is due okay so you know get your moongus counters ready <laughs> okay because this thing is is not going away all right so now what we can do is let's take a look at some of the the top results here and you know victory road right now only has the top 50 but if you use the lab mouse website there you actually have like all the teams available but at the very least let's at least look at the top eight okay so now if we just take a look at some of the the results here within the top eight uh, first of all, look at the finalist team as well as the winning team. So Chupa taking the regional title here. And, you know, when he <laughs> finally uh, clicked that last close combat on the Amoongus to win, you know, his, his reaction was priceless. It was great. Uh, great celebration from Chupa. And again, he's been around for a long time. You know, top cut here, you know, you know, top four, top two. Uh, but that elusive regional title escaped him until today. So congratulations to Chupa again. And also, Paul, you know, still vying for that next regional title but you know the accolades go on for paul chua either way uh and then you know it then some also some big names here which we'll talk about in a second but let's look at chupa's team first and you know it looks like a regulation d team and it is right because you got chen pao urshifu stuff uh along with uh tornadoes offense right with bleak wind storm rain dance making the urshifu do even more damage taking away nine tails weather especially and then here is the Arcanine rather than Landris for your Intimidate support. So here's your Arcanine, Rillaboom, and Urshifu, uh, your, your Fire, Water, Grass core. okay? And then the Chen Pao here, Terra goes very, very standard, right? Sucker Punch, Ice, Grass, Sacred Sword, Protect. The Flutter is Booster Energy with three attacks and Protect. So uh, no Icy Wind here. Sometimes you like to see Icy Wind. But here's Taunt. Yeah, this is actually like as standard as it gets in terms of like Tailwind Balance offense here. Um, you know, Urshifu plus... Uh, four physical attackers, you know, that all have priority, you know, as set, you know, and the main thing now is Rillaboom getting Grassy Glide. So, like, th that's pretty much it. Like, the main difference between something like this versus, like, the Regulation D version is that Rillaboom has Grassy Glide. And you have U-Turn over here as opposed to something like Stomping Tantrum or High Horsepower. Uh, either way, this is a, a Chupa preference, of course. Either way. Uh, and then over here, the Arcanine with the Band, uh, you know, with Flare Blitz, Head Smash... Rockside Extreme. So I don't know how often Chupa clicked Head Smash or, you know, just in general, you know, when people have Head Smash, I don't know how often they click it because most times I, I just see either Flare Blitz, Rock Slide, and sometimes the occasional E-Speed, of course. Um, you know, in terms of this move, I, I would imagine, of course, it's the least clicked of the four moves without a doubt, you know. Um, but other than that, pretty, pretty standard. Uh, and it's really all just about, like, maintaining control, right? You, you set up your Tailwind, okay? And then from there... Uh, you know, your your Flutter Mains and, and your Chen Pals and Arcanines, they're, they're just outspeeding everything, dealing a ton of damage. And then when you get the chance, you can set up the Rain Dance, you know, get in the Urshifu, especially, you know, you could either you turn out into it, and then next turn, you just go for these hard-hitting Surging Strikes, and it's really hard to stop. And then, you know, you already know what you're getting with Fake Out Surging Strikes pressure here. Um, so, yeah, nothing else to really say about Chupa's team. It's, it's very solid and consistent. Uh, and then Paul Chu over here also... Um, you know, what looks like a pretty good Roaring Moon balance team, again, with Fluttermane, Landris, Iron Hands, okay? And then you slap on the Amoongus here, as opposed to Ogre Pond, and then Paul going for the Heatran over here, you know, with Flash Cannon, uh, and, and no life over here, but Shooka Berry, so that's pretty good against ground, 
uh, type attacks, like maybe something like a, uh, a Landris. But the the Terra Fairy has been on the rise over the Heatran, and, and I think now it is the better Terra option on Heatran as opposed to Grass. Grass is still very good, of course, but the Fairy against fighting type attacks in general is just very, very good. Um, and then this is a Dragon Dance Roaring Rune as opposed to Tailwind. So, you know, with booster energy, you can get, you know, uh, plus two attacks and then, you know, get a nice little speed bump here. Uh, but the, the Flutterman here with Perish Song is also pretty interesting here. But again, still tons of damage. Uh, and then from here, Landris, pretty standard set with Terra Flying. And then Amoongus Terra Water is also really good. You know, this is your Cleric of the team. This is your Trick Room Pokemon as well. Um, you know, just able to have spore pressure and healing potential with Pollen Puff is always very, very good. So, good stuff from the top two teams. Then things get interesting as we go forward here. Um, first of all, uh, let's look at Rogov C. Again, Reggie Drago, another dragon type that, you know, we always say good typing now against the Ogre Ponds. And that probably contributed to their decline a little bit. But, you know, this is Tailwind stuff with Reggie Drago. We've seen this before. <clears throat> sometimes you'll see, you know, well, actually not sometimes. A lot of times you'll see Ferregraph just to deny priority uh, against the Reggie Drago. But uh, Rogov says, I'm not worried about that. Uh, I like what we have over here with Arcanine, Rillaboom, and Urshifu yet again. You know, this Firewater Grass Core with the Tornadus. Uh, and then just click Dragon Energy, you know. And then uh, if you're stuck against Fairy types, this is where the Goldango comes into play, of course, right? So, you know... Uh, what's also pretty cool with the Arcanine is again, you have Flare Blitz, E Speed, Rock Side, and then your tech move of Will O Wisp. You know, you don't really have um, damage. Well, you do have Intimidate, I guess, but Will O Wisp is also just very, very punishing in general uh, against a lot of these phys physical types that's running around. So that's also pretty good. But then from here, Mr. Jamie Boyd, okay, you know, he said on stream he was doubting his skills a little bit after a while because it's been a while since he's returned to, you know, at least this high uh, within a regional and, you know, shout outs to him. But this is also a pretty cool team. Another Roaring Moon team, but what's really more impressive uh, is some of these tech options here. First of all, the Ogre Pond here is the Grass Ogre Pond, right? With the speed boost, all right? Along with Defiant. So, you know, you always like to pair Roaring Moon with like some Defiant user or competitive user like King Gambit or Milotic, but... Jamie Boyd says, I don't need those two. I'd rather have the Ogre Pond here with Define because now I can actually be fast, right? Because whereas Milotic and King Gambit, they struggle with speed a little bit, right? But now the Ogre Pond doesn't really care about that because you're getting a speed boost, you're able to outspeed everything. Well, not quote unquote everything, but you know what I mean, the major threats. And then, you know, Swords Dance is also really good. You know, just having all this momentum and then hard hitting Ivy Cudgels, bonk on the heads, stomping tantrum, good strong ground coverage. There's no landers here. Uh, but Life Orb, Goldengo, also pretty good against the Fairy types, which is something that Roaring Moon can struggle with. And, you know, you have Breaking Swipe here. So this is like, again, that supportive Roaring Moon set. Um, you know, just mitigating damage and giving your team speed control with Tailwind as well. Uh, and then the Thunder Starion was probably the most interesting one of them all, even with the Ogre Pond over here. Because, you know, this is still an Ogre Pond, but you wouldn't have expected to see this on a regulation E team, right? So what's actually pretty cool is this is Terra Flying with Terra Blast, okay, and Bolt of Swords. So that's actually good synergy because again, you know, electric type attacks are good into flying types, right? But now with Bolt Absorb, you can't really do that. Um, so you take away that kind of weakness, which is pretty, pretty smart in all honesty. And then, you know, Thunderbolt and Wild Bolt Storm, also very, very good uh, coverage here. You can get, you know, Paralysis Hacks. Grass Knot is really good against some of the ground types like Ursa Luna, for example. Um, but this, with the Assault Vest is made to be relatively bulky, okay, uh, take hits and deal damage back, of course, uh, you can just consider, like, stuff against Urshifu, right, you have something for that, um, but all in all, this was a, an interesting choice there, uh, but I respect it, I respect it a lot, uh, and then this is Life Orb Goldengo with Nasty Plot as well, so that's also pretty good, um, but all in all, pretty, pretty cool team from Jamie, um, again, Terra Blast, Terra Fairy is also very good against fighting types it could also do a, a number into those uh iron hands you know because again drain punch is not very nice but now with terra blast terra fairy uh you're able to put pressure on those iron hands altogether especially also against urshiku rapid strike uh that's also another reason and then you also have this against a lot of the dragon types like another roaring moon for example uh that doesn't want to be taking physical fairy moves uh in general uh or just fairy type fairy moves in general because of that four times weakness but you know Good, good on that for, for Jamie. So congrats to him 
on the good result here. Then Bobby, so Bobby here, okay, what was cool about his team is the Sinistra, but more importantly, the set behind it, all right? And if you look at um, the set, it was, oops, uh, it was Nasty Plot Sinistra here with Heat Proof, right? We saw this a, a little bit on stream and that was actually pretty cool here. But again, uh, Tornadus offense, you know, with uh, Urshifu over here and Chen Pao. And then here's the Arcanine. Uh, no Rillaboom here, but instead you have the other grass type, Sinistra, with redirection support. Then you have Nasty Plot setup potential. So like you could do like, you know, Sinistra plus Iron Hands, fake out Nasty Plot potentially. Um, and then you just have like these plus four, plus two matcha gotchas, you know, for very, very strong healing and then good, you know, chance, you know, chances for burn. Terra type steel is also pretty good. You know, heat proof can't click that fire move on you. So that's also relatively nice. Uh, but yeah, this makes a lot of sense here. This is last shout on the Chen Pao as well, along with ice spinner instead of crash. And then here's a sucker punch, of course. Um, but yeah. Yeah, you know, this is this was the, the main cool option on Bobby, so that's also pretty nice. Uh, then we have a couple of um, Blood Moon or Saluna teams, but one has a fast mode. The other one is completely committed to the Trick Room mode. So if we look at Enzo's team over here, he's got the fast and slow mode. So, uh, and some of them are, you can function in both, right? Because you have Tornadus and Armor. So technically, Armor Rouge's speed is not that slow and it's not that fast either but it can function in Trick Room because of that, and it can also function in Tailwind. So, um, you know, fast expanding forces are gonna hurt. <laughs> okay, so there's that. And then you have just the Ndidi uh, armors and then the Blood Moon mode, right? So this is your slow mode. Okay, then the fast mode is over here with Tornadus, Urshifu, and Fluttermane here, right? So what's also cool about this is you have Grass Knot here for a tech move, and then this is Swords Dance Urshifu with Brick Break. Oh my goodness, right? Swords Dance with Brick Break, you know, again, this is pretty useful against like, um, you know, breaking your uh, breaking nine tail screens. I don't know if this was clicked. Uh, oh, I was gonna say, was this weakness boss? You know, it's just throw spray. I was gonna say, do you, do you really want to click this onto your own or Saluna? But brick break is an interesting choice there. Um, we understand it, of course. All right, uh, because again, you know, one thing that players like to do, you know, if you're playing nine tails, is in the face of Trick Room teams, mitigate their damage with the screens, right? They may have Trick Room and the speed control, but you can just set up your Veil and mitigate all that damage and stall it. But now with Brick Break on your team, you can't do that because now you can just break the screens and get your speed control. And now the opponent uh, on the Ninetales team has to reposition and think otherwise, right? Uh, but other than that, you know, Throat Spray, Ursa Luna, Blood Moon still is very, very strong. More popular items are the Weakness Policy and the Life Orb, but you don't have a Dust Clops here to self-activate, right? And the Life Orb is going on the Arm Rouge, so Throat Spray just seems, uh, you know, correct here in this sense. And of course, you already know what you're getting with the Indeedy here, okay? Um, and then finally over here, well, not finally, but then this is the, the slower version. This one has Pain Split, okay? Uh, and then this is actually still Life Orb Blood Moon, so no weakness policy here. So instead, not at, opting to go for Brick Break here, but instead uh, going for Life Orb. And Blood Moon, Life Orb just can exert damage right from the get-go. Doesn't need a weakness policy proc. Um, and then, you know, even though it's taking, you know, Life Orb Recall every turn, you can always just heal it with Pain Split, so that's also pretty cool. But what's also pretty cool is the Ogre Pond Corner Mask over here. And remember, if you look at the top eight, there is not a single Wellspring or Heart Flame Mask Ogre Pond. It's either the Grass one, right? The straight up Defiant Grass one, or the Cornerstone Rock one. And again, you know, with the Rock one, you know, the defense boost is nice, but sturdy, you know, very physical meta. So that's going to be really, really good at taking attacks. And then the rest of the team is actually relatively standard as far as like uh, a Blood Moon uh team is concerned chi will make the blood moon do more damage right because of beads of ruin dust clops you know sets trick room you know occasional chip damage with nightshade consistent 50 damage and then you already know what you're getting with landers and iron hands over here so um cool idea there and then finally finally now we're getting to what is my favorite team of the eight right uh, i would imagine you guys could have figured that out okay it is the salamence rain team from justin tang over here um and you know i i like to say guys look I, I told you so. I told you Salamence was the call in the meta. I've been saying this for maybe since two months ago. All right, that Salamence was the call. And finally, you know, in regulation E, it was it was good. I saw it, 
right? Which is why we used it often. We had a few videos on Salamence already. Um, you know, people have taken our Salomon squats and got top cut results in reggae tours. Um, and Justin says, yes, Clover, you are correct. Salamence is very good right now. And, you know, I, I don't even know if he said that. But uh, he wasn't alone here. He had a building group with the other Tang, Shiliang Tang, and of course, Gavin Michaels, the rain guy. You know, so the three collabed and they came up with this. Uh, here is Salamence here with Draco, with Hurricane and Draco Meter. So this is special ments. Right, which is good, right? Because you don't get intimidated, right? Because you're a special attacker. Uh, and then at the same time, you also get access to Tailwind. So you have Intimidate and Tailwind going for you, okay? So this is why I like this better than, than Landers, for example, right? And then the Dragon typing just resists all the Ogre Ponds, right? So then from there, you know, you have Air Slash here. So this is like if you don't have, you know, the, the rain out and you can just click this but the choice scarf tailwind you know it's just to give you the best possible chance for speed control and then you can just switch it out right and then reset but this is pretty good and then like if you just look at this it's actually relatively standard rain you know just with salamis and then you know the the occasion the iron bundle here because if you just think about how a rain team is constructed just in general you always start here with pelipper and then you always have something like iron hands oops that's iron jugulus Iron Hands, then Amoongus, right? And then Goldengo. Why? Because, think about it. You know, you have Goldengo, which very much loves Tailwind, all right? It loves Amoongus, you know, to help potentially set it up here. And then the Iron Hands, again, with Fake Out Pressure is also pretty good on rain teams in general because you need you need that strong electric type uh, on, on these rain teams, right? And it's also pretty good into Trick Room, right, with, with these two. But this is like your typical rain core, Okay, and then, you know, you have your rain sweeper and then something else over here. So Salamis was chosen here, um, your dragon type, and then finally the iron bundle, uh, which can do a couple of things here, right? Because the bundle, uh, let's go back to um, the pose uh, on, on tank screen over here. So the bundle is actually uh, pretty cool in the sense that it can function on rain teams as well as the snow teams because bundle will get the defense boost and it gets to have you know some good flexibility into the rain as well because you have hydro pump here i don't know how many times justin was able to hit hydro pump and connect but you know <laughs> that is a, a question we'll have to ask him but this is pretty cool so if you just look at the tools here look you got intimidate support you got redirection you got fake out pressure and here's the speed control with tailwind all right along with icy wind okay and then you have setup here with nasty plot and then you also have the occasional wide guard if you need it, right? And then you have healing uh, with the Among Us. So uh, from here, then you look at Weather Ball here. So maybe one too many Hydro Pumps were missed, but Weather Ball is just very, very good consistent damage in the rain. Um, if you don't want to just keep clicking Hydro Pump. And then, you know, this is also pretty good. Uh, it gives you something to also click in Sun as well as also Snow. So the, the Weather Ball becomes whatever weather it is. So this is actually really, really smart. Um, from the Pelper. I actually forgot that it did get Weather Ball. So good on those three for picking that up. Uh, and then from here, you know, uh, Iron Hands, standard set here. Among Us, also very, very standard. Terra Dragon, Gold Dangle. Yeah, secretly, guys, this was actually a Gold Dangle team. You know, just made with a bunch of support. Like, how do you support Gold Dangle? Terra Dragon and Intimidate support, right? So, you know, the Dragon will resist the, the fire type attacks. And then you also have the Rain to mitigate that. And then at the same time, you know, <coughs> uh, if a fairy wants to click something against you, you know, you have the make it rain steel move for you. Uh, and then, you know, you just have everything here. Yeah, you have everything here to help it set up. You have redirection, you have fake out pressure. You have all things going for you here uh, if you're a Goldengo fan. And this is uh, one of the teams to use if you really want to use Goldengo. So shout outs to Justin and, and crew for building something like this. But all in all, you know, what do we see here? Look. We got Roaring Moon, two Roaring Moons, a Reggie Drago, and a Salamence. So we have four dragons within the top eight. Makes sense. Then you look at Tornadus, right? You have four Tornaduses of the top eight. So the, uh, the, the meta is very, very tailwindy, very tailwind offensive. And then technically, you know, this Salamence has tailwind too. So that's technically five tailwinds on these teams, right? Did Jamie have tailwind? Uh, yeah, so there's, so six of the eight had tailwind, right? Uh, only Paul and only Andrew did not have it, but that's okay. So six of the eight had Tailwind. All right, and now look how many Arcanines are on these teams. One, two, three, four. Four of the top five 
had Arcanine. Landris, second place, of course, and then also in seventh place. So, and then you still have Salamence here. So two Landris and a Salamence here. So Intimidate support still very, very good. You have two Munguses here. Okay, so that's good. And again, no Ogre Ponds. Uh, two Rillabooms, all right? But look how many Urshifu here. One, two, three, four, five. Five Urshifu Rapid Strikes in the top eight, okay? That says something. All right, and then for Fluttermane, where are you? One, two, three Flutters, okay? So not too bad. You know, I, I would expect at least four, all right? But three is, is still pretty good. But all in all, you know, just from the eight itself, yeah, that's what we're getting at. So now let's take a look at some other stuff, uh, you know, in terms of the other teams. Okay, so the other thing I also want to look at is this new Rinya team archetype with uh, Dragonite, Chen Pao, and the, the Ferrigraph here. So if we just look at... Um, Mr. Brian Yum over here, uh, and he's got his own variation of it. And you know, this six has been going around. You know, you'll see some variation in the sets, but this is the six, all right. And Brian says, okay, well, first of all, let's talk about the six. You have Dragonite Chen Pao with Urshifu Rillaboom. That's pretty standard. And then you have the Frigraph over here. So you know, you deny opposing priority mods against your own priorities. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but all in all, again, Firewater to Grass Core uh, with the Dragon type. Here's your fairy type, and then here's your steel type, right? Technically, two fairies here, but again, Terra Fairy Heatran coming back here yet again with Terra Blast, Terra Fairy. That's good into Urshifu, of course. Um, also, can be good against the Iron Hand, so that that's smart. Uh, and then over here, you have Outrage, okay, with E Speed, Aerial Ace, and Stomping Tantrum. So standard Dragonite set. Um, and then here's Rillaboom with Woodhammer and Grassy Glide. So no pivot move here. You have the pivot move here with the U-turn, uh, but again. Uh, you'll, 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 you'll definitely see this a lot on ladder, you know, Dragonite Chen Pao just in general with the fur graph now. So this is where that archetype came from. Um, so nice to see this come about, you know, you're not going to see too many teams without Fluttermane or Iron Hands or Landris, but this is the one that does not use either of the three, which is actually very, very interesting. Okay. So Trick Room here, along with Helping Hand, sometimes you'll see Imprisoned Trick Room here, right? It just all depends on how the player wants to play it. But helping hand with a lot of these Pokemon is just going to have them do so much damage. Um, but look at how much priority you have here. You have one, two, three, four Pokemon with priority. Here's your Trick Room setter, right? To be able to deny Trick Room against you. Um, but all in all, you know, pretty, pretty cool team. Uh, and this is Brian's adaptation of it. So that's also pretty good. Okay, let's go into the Lab Mouse website here. And now let's look at... Uh, some other team comms that we can find. So I wanted to look at how Don Dozo w did in this tournament. You know, I always like to keep tabs on Don Dozo, you know, just to see whether I need to, you know, continue to respect it or maybe I can, you know, just say, you know what, it's not worth it at, at this moment. It's not great. Um, but here we are. So I'm just going to go up to like the 128 mark. So, you know, because that's the, the mark for CP. You got one, two, three, four, five, six Don Dozo teams within the top 128. So, you know, I don't know how much you want to read into that, but you know, but there was one at number nine, okay? And this is the this is the one that I'm interested in as far as number 26 is as as well. But if we take a look here, Carson Jones, uh, it's Dozo Glamora, right? With the ability shield Tatsugiri. We talked about this in another video, all right? But this one has taunt, and this is Ordup Earthquake Substitute and Protect. This is pretty good. And then here's the Glamora stuff. Life Warp Urshifu. I I I can't say I've seen this <laughs> a few times. I, I have actually. And then Tornadus here, so very hyper offensive, okay, with Fluttermane as well with Glamora. Um, and then you just have Dozo stuff. So that's pretty cool. Then if you look at this one, this is the Don Dozo screens variant with Glamora that we've mentioned as well as, uh, you know, in our prep video uh, leading up to Toronto. But this one doesn't have sub. This one has actually Earthquake. I like Earthquake Don Dozo um, with Citrus Berry, Glamora, Ninetales screens. Then you have Iron Hands, and then here's the Ogre Pond here with Sword Dance. Sword Dance behind screens is going to be very, very strong. Uh, but this is another way to consider playing it. And another Ability Shield Tatsugiri, yet again. Okay, so, you know, Weezing is not friendly. Then you have a couple of different Don Dozo archetypes here, right? This one from Colding Light. Um, he's saying, you know what? I got Don Dozo. I've got Indity Armor Rouge with Torkoal and Lilligant. Okay, and that's all I need. I have a strong four in terms of like my trick room mode my fast mode and then let's just slap on down dozo here so i got my 222 idea here um and this is one of the 222 teams for down dozo that you can expect to see but this one is wave crash terra blast with terra flying 
So that's probably good against like Rillaboom stuff and then Earthquake again as well. Um, and then this one is not Ability Shield Tatsugiri. This is Choice Scarf. Okay. And then this is Skill Swap Indeedy. That's pretty cool. Along with uh, Armor Root here with Flash Fire. Of course, this one has a, a Focus Blast here rather than like Aura here. I guess that's probably like for some damage calcs here. But, and then Standard Lilligan stuff with Torkoal Specs. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, I like that one. Uh, then over here with Ryan, he, he's saying, yeah, I've got the true 2-2-2 two, two, two Dondozo team. I've got Dondozo, Tatsugiri, Dragonite, Champau, Fluttermane, and Chiyu. Okay, so yeah, again, another variant of the 2-2-2 two, two, two Dondozo team. You know, I always want to do like a whole video on like different 2-2-2 two, two, two Dondozo teams because there's actually a few. There's This is not the only one, and the previous one was another version. You know, so there's like multiple 2-2-2 two, two, two Dondozos that you can all uh, consider using. You know, and they're all like good and strong. It just all depends on how you want to use them. But Booster Flutter with Choice Specs Chiyu, that's correct. You know, Dazzling Gleam, Icy Wind, and then this one has Snarl, uh, you know, for damage mitigation, of course. So uh, that's pretty good here. Terra Dragon, Wave Crash, Earthquake Order Up, of course. You know, very, very nice. Then um, down here, uh, this one has a Pheasant Dippity here, uh, close to 120 here. So this one is Icy Wind and Tailwind. So uh, instead of Tornadus, they've opted for the bulk on the Pheasant Dippity. I, I respect it. And then here is Dazzling Gleam along with Icy Wind. So you still get a little bit of speed control here. Um, and then here's the gold dango with trick and choice specs, but this is pretty good as well You know, I, I like Kyle Andrews team. It's also pretty nice, but again as far as like overall So not a lot of Dondozo, right? Not too much. Okay. In fact of the 500 plus how many came 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20. So um, not too much only about 20 plus of the 500 uh, we're trying to use uh, Don Dozo here. All right. So and then of the 20 plus only about six uh, were within the the top 128. So, you know, that this is probably one of the worst that I've seen Don Dozo do uh, in terms of a, a tour, right? Or for a regional, I would say, but it's expected, right? Because, you know, Don Dozo gets worse every format, you know, with all this paradox Pokemon and the power of creep um, passing it. So as expected, but you know, it was making a bit of a comeback, but this one just put it right back down. So we'll see what happens in the next region. But as far as like this one, Dondozo. So I also wanted to take a look at some different size spam teams. So we already know like, you know, Enzo had the the top size spam team, you know, at sixth place. But there were some other good strong size spam teams. Like the one over here at 18th place, Dragonair Jordan, aka Elijah Garner. He's been a homie for a while. And let's look at his team for a bit. Uh, so we already, we already know what we're getting with Indity Armors, right? With uh, this combination. But he's got a couple, you know, cool techs here. This is Terra Fairy Indeedy uh, with the Rocky Helmet as opposed to Terra Water. But the Armors has Flamethrower here, um, you know, for single target coverage. So Expanding Force, no Heat Wave, but Flamethrower instead. Uh, so this way, I guess, you know, just in case he gets Wide Guard, he has something to click. I respect it. And then you have Iron Hands here, which can function with both of these cores. So it looks like it's a double core here. Um, which is what makes the size spam idea rather interesting. But um, here's Tailwind, uh, which again, we said it earlier that armors can function both uh, in the Trick Room and Tailwind mode. And then you have Sinistra and an Iron Hands here. So this is like the Trick Room mode here, if you considered it, right? And then, you know, Redirection Support with Rage Powder, Strength Sam, Macha Gacha, Trick Room, Terra Poison is pretty cool. You know, the healing that you can get uh, from, Ma from Sinistra, you know, for the rest of the team is actually really, really nice. Roy Moon here. I always liked Roy Moon on Psy Spam, you know, and I'll tell you why. Just because uh, it's a dark tank, right? It's almost like the idea of having Urshifu single strike on a team, you know, with Psy Spam, kind of like the the other more standard Psy Spam teams with Gallade and Urshifu right now. But I like Roy Moon instead, okay? And, you know, Dragonair kind of probably thought what I'm thinking as well. Like, you could have a dark type and then add a secondary mode with Tailwind. Okay, and now all of a sudden your your team is very very flexible in the best of three, right? Because now you have screen support here along with Alona and Nine Tails, and we did this before, right? We had Rory Moon Nine Tails on a team before. We gave that team to Philip, and he's been doing very well in ladder and some other online tournaments with it. But then you add Sinistra here, and now this can also uh, be used in Trick Room and Tailwind as well. So you know, pretty cool team here from from Dragonair Jordan. I like this a lot. Okay. Then you have like, again, we already talked about the Dondoza variant, 
Uh, then over here, this is what we were talking about, right? The, the standard Gallade Urshifu Dark type here. So, you know, again, Indidi, Armourouge, Torkoal, Ursaluna. That's how you start all these Psy Spam teams. Then you had you add the Breaker with the Urshifu, right? Because one way to stall uh, it, the Trick Room stuff is just use your screens, but then Urshifu doesn't care and then just breaks through, right? Um, and then it's good fighting coverage against opposing Dark types that want to be used against the Indidi Armors. But Gallade also helps you there as well, especially, you know, with... Sacred Sword Stab along with Sharpness is very, very good. Psycho Cut in Terrain is going to do a lot of damage. It can snipe sub Iron Hands depending on their sets. Um, and then Terra Water is also pretty good as well. Uh, but either way, this is uh, another form of it. This is like the current version. I remember Brian Collins in Sacramento, you know, coming up with this. And then uh, after that, you know, a lot of people started using it. And now they're using their own variations. We'll probably make one as well, you know, as a, as a rental. So this way people can use it. Um, then over here, uh, Ian, you know, with again the Tailwind mode with Blood Moon Ursa Luna, uh, but again secondary mode with the Trick Room stuff. So that's what that's the common thing we're seeing now. We see like Don Dozo, or we just saw Dragonair Jordan's variant, but now we're also seeing like you know Tailwind offense along with these you know side spam teams to make them flexible. Because again, Armorage is in that speed tier, which is a little bit awkward. It's not too slow. It's not that fast, which means. You can be in both Trick Room and Tailwind, and it makes a lot of sense here uh, to be able to try and do that. Like, here it is. Tornadus, Fluttermane, Ursh, you know, NDD, Armors, Iron, Blood Moon, Ursula. I think we covered this earlier, if, if anything. Okay. Then here's one with Weezing, which is the, the interesting one, right? So, NDD, Armors, Torkoal, Urshifu. Then, now we're adding Fluttermane here. It makes sense, right? If you're going to have Torkoal, throw in a Fluttermane. Then you have Weezing over here. So, that's pretty cool as well. You get to take away... Uh, other weather setters, you know, like another nine tails, for example. Uh, so they don't get the weather, and then you know, this is the Galarian using as well. So um, that's also pretty cool. Uh, is there any other noteworthy ones? I think that's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, size fam is still like pretty strong right now, and especially when you're adding multiple modes like this. Uh, in fact, I think this was the oh yeah, the other one that we saw that was the Enzo squad. So maybe they might have built together, but this is their variant, I guess. Um, but this is pretty cool. I like it a lot. So uh, expect to see this form of Tailwind Trick Room, Tail Room teams, as we like to call it, moving forward. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about in terms of like some of these teams <clears throat> is Moltres, right? You know, Moltres has been, of course, just like Salamis, one of our favorites. You guys know this. Uh, we had a good Moltres team, but I think this one is also pretty good as well. Uh, so 8-6 from Luho Shen, and he, and he built together with another partner. But this revolves around Dusclops with uh, Blood Moon or Saluna. But now look at this. You have Sinistra here, right? Which benefits both the Moltres and the Blood Moon, right? Because you're you're taking occasional chip damage, you know, with Life Orb. And then the Moltres, of course, you can double dip into Berserk uh, with Sinistra here. But now Dusclops also has decent synergy uh, with, excuse me, Moltres as well. Two Ghost types here. But again, you know, you can heal your own Moltres with Pain Split, okay? And now that can get you back to full health and now you can double dip back into Berserk. So that also kind of makes sense as well. Um, so go figure here. Uh, and then at the same time, you know, you just think about Blood Moon or Saluna might struggle against Rillaboom, might struggle against Urshiboom. Moltres does well against Rillaboom too. So, you know, Air Slash over there, uh, Resist Grass type coverage. Uh, that's also pretty good. Uh, so, you know, and then the Sinistra, you know, with uh, Redirection can deter those... Um, Urshifu surging strikes uh, from you. So you have that going for you. And then you have Intimidate here. You have Fake Out Pressure. Uh, all in all, like, again, things that a Trick Room team wants, you got it here. You know, Fake Out Intimidate Redirection uh, along with multiple Trick Room setters. Uh, and then, you know, you, you just go from there. Good balance here with Special Attackers as well as Physical as well. So I think this is a really cool Moltres team. I think this kind of variant could also rise. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think of the Toronto Regionals in general. Let me know if you think we missed something here or if we didn't cover. Uh, again, I used two sites here. I used Victory Road here, but I also used the Lab Mouse website. And again, if you want to look at like more data, you should definitely uh, consider using this. Like if you want to look at team compositions, like for example, the four, if you want to look at four Pokemon team compositions, the pop, most popular one was something like this with Wellspring, uh, Ogre Pond, Landris, Fluttermane and Iron Man. So you could, this could literally be like a very good tool in terms of like helping your team as far as like what's popular right now. Um, and then, you know, it'll get you started. And then from there, 
uh, you know, you can just round out your slots depending on what you need. Okay. But anyway, we'll be back with another video in the next one, guys. Peace out and have a good one.